Hello geometers, um, this is the lecture on properties of equality as they apply to both algebra and geometry. Now you actually know most of these from algebra, uh, except for the first one, we just never gave it a name. Whenever we were doing the same thing to both sides, like adding three to both sides, then you'd write three on one side and three on the other side. Well, there was an equal sign implied between them. And that meant that three is equal to three. And then you would add the same thing to both sides or to multiply or divide. So that process of writing three is equal to a three or anything else is equal to anything else is the reflexive property of equality, which means a thing or a number is equal to itself. Now that might seem almost too obvious to write a rule for, but nevertheless, we do it. Two more properties from algebra would be the commutative and the, and the uh, let's see, well, here's the commutative property, which says that the order doesn't matter as long as you are adding, and uh, or the order doesn't matter as long as you are multiplying. Here's another property. This is the associative property. Um, and you'll notice in the first uh, equation up there, that we have a and b and c in order on one side of the equation and a and b and c in that order on the other side of the equation. So what's different from one side to the other is that a and b is grouped on the left hand side and b and c are grouped on the right hand side. The associative property says that the grouping doesn't matter. In the second equation we see it written for the multiplication property and there the things are in the same order a and b and c and A and B and C, and but the only thing it changes is the grouping. In the third equation, this is an application of another property that you know well called the distributive property. And that's what happens, with what you use, that's the rule that you use when you have addition or subtraction mixed up with multiplication. The A out front is multiplied to what's in the parentheses, B and C. So then you, when you multiply it, then you have AB plus AC. In geometry, we have many of the same things. We have the reflexive property, a number is equal to itself. And we also have the substitution property. So if A is equal to B, then A can be substituted for B in any expression. You have also used this in previous occasions. Uh, the one that kind of the example that comes to mind is when you're solving by substitution in linear systems of equations. When you worked out what x or y could be in one of the equations by isolating it, then you could pick that up and substitute it for x or y, whichever was appropriate, in the other equation. Substitution. If two things are the same, then you could write a instead of b, or you could write b instead of a. Okay, so then we have the four properties that we know uh, quite well. Whatever you add to one side, you must also add to the other. If you have A is equal to B, then adding C to both sides doesn't change the balance of the equation. It's a new equation, but it doesn't change the balance of the equation. If you subtract, then you subtract it from both sides. So A minus C is the same as B minus C. This is still whatever you do to one side, you also do to the other. Here it is for multiplication, a times c equals b times c. If we started off with a equaling b, then both sides are multiplied by c. Finally, the division property of equality, whatever you divide from one side, you must also divide it from the other. So if we start with a equaling b, then dividing both sides by c does not change the balance of the equality. Two more that you might be or probably are familiar with, if a is equal to b, then squaring one side should be the same as squaring the other side. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other. And finally, the square root property. When you take the square root of one side, you had better take the square root of the other. Here's an example from algebra using all of the, uh, using many of these pieces. So in the first, we have this uh, two times the root of the group x minus five plus three equals seven. And then the last thing done to x on the left hand side is the add three. And we are gonna undo that 
by subtracting 3. Now, notice that I just wrote 3 is equal to 3. That's the reflexive property. Then when I subtract it from both sides, I just write down what I have left. That's the third line. So after I subtract 3 from both sides, then I have 2 times the square root of the group x minus 5 equals 4. Now I want to get rid of the 2 that's out front. So I'm going to do that by dividing by 2. So I write down my, re my 2 equals 2 again. And I'm going to not, I'm just not going to show the division by both sides. You can certainly put a dividing sign that divides the equation 2 root x minus 5 divided by 2 and do the same thing on the other side, 4 divided by 2. You can do that. Uh, you've probably been taught to do that. That's fine. Um, and, but just write down the result. Uh, and the result is x minus 5 is equal to just 2. So that was division property of equality. And I didn't draw the arrow up to the right spot, but that's what we get when we do the division, division dividing both sides by 2. Next, I need to get rid of that square root, and I undo that with squaring of both sides. And that's what I showed in the next line down. And then when I, I'm all done squaring both sides, all that I have left on the left-hand side is x minus 5. All that I have left on the right-hand side is 4. Now, I, the last thing to undo to get at x is that minus 5. So I put down 5 equals 5, and then I'm going to add it to both sides, and I end up with just x equals 9. Now, you haven't written down the reasons for all of these steps, the reflexive property, the subtraction property, the reflexive property, and so on. But that's what we did. We didn't trouble you with those, the names for those things back in algebra. Now we're going to get fussier about those things. So here's an example using some of these properties in a geometry problem. And our problem is, in triangle ABC, angle C is equal to 90 degrees, and angle B is twice as large as angle A. So how large is angle A? Well, the triangle angle sum theorem lets us say that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equals 180 degrees. What gives us the right to say that again? That's the triangle angle sum theorem. So that's the reason side of my two column proof. The left hand side is what we're going to do. The right hand side is the reasons for being able to do that thing. Okay, so starting with that, let's work down to the next line. The next line says, if angle C is equal to 90 degrees. Well, where did we get that, that angle C was equal to 90 degrees? Oh, it's up there in what we were told about this triangle. If angle C is equal to 90 degrees, then I should be able to substitute 90 degrees for angle C in the equation angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. And that's what I showed in that second line. Now, what's happening in the third line? Well, I have a thing equal to itself. Well, why am I putting that there? And in the next line, we see the reason. We subtracted 90 degrees from both sides so that all I have left on the left-hand side is angle A plus angle B is equal to 90 degrees. And how did we get here again? We subtracted 90 degrees from both sides. So that's the subtraction property of equality. Notice I'm using a little shorthand over there, subtraction property of equality. You can even, in when you're writing your proofs, you can even shorten it up a little bit more. So instead of writing subtraction, write minus, just the minus sign. Minus prop equals is sometimes a, a common way of, of um, showing that abbreviation, subtraction property of equality, without writing all of that out. Okay, so having done that, we've got another substitution that we can make. Back up at the top, it says angle B is twice as large as angle A. Well, that translates to that equation, angle B equals 2A. And that was a given. We were told that. That's how it gives us the right to put that there. Now, what are we going to do with that? Instead of angle B in the equation right above, we're going to write 2 of angle A. So then the equation reads angle A plus 2 of angle A equals 90 degrees. So angle A plus 2 of angle A makes 3 of angle A equals 90 degrees. That's what we, happens when we combine like terms. And finally, in the end, how do we get from 3 angle A equals 90 degrees to just angle A equals 30 degrees? We divided both sides by 3. We didn't show divide by 3. We just did it. And But the reason that lets us do that is the division property of equality. And that's angle A. Angle A equals 30 degrees. 
That answers our question.